Okay, so first off, I just want to start with um, I've shot a, a number of videos. Um, then at this point, actually, I've shot them a couple times over. And then at this point, I'm, I'm starting over once again. Just because at the end of it, hey, I actually found some um, problems I was having. Um, and, and I had done something goofy in my unit test, so I hadn't caught that yet. Um, and I've since gone back and I've fixed those problems. Um, then, you know, re-ran all my unit tests and got those actually set up to where they're testing they're doing better tests now um, and if you're unaware of what unit testing is um, literally just look up any language you're familiar with and unit testing um, if you're not real familiar with you know languages just look up programming unit testing um, but it's just the idea of automating your your test instead of manually going in and doing things to try and see how it's working and make sure it's working the way you want it to um, you just write more code to test that um, anyway, we're not going to get into that at this point. Um, uh, eventually, maybe later, I, you know, because I, I know I tried a couple different frameworks for Lua for unit testing. Um, I want to say three different ones. And all three just would not work inside Cheat Engine. Um, just a variety of problems it had with just the, the way it was meant to work. More for like Lua with you know in Windows and that kind of thing, and it wasn't really set up to run in an embedded environment like Cheat Engine. Um, so I actually ended up writing my own. Um, if you're interested in it, or you already know how unit testing works, um, it's on the tool. It's in the tools section on the Fearless Cheat Engine forum. Um, feel free to check that out if you'd like, because um, I do. When I write code, I like to, you know, I. Sometimes I write my unit tests and then write code to, you know, to, to work that way so that, you know, to pass my unit tests and then sometimes I do the opposite. Um, and of course that's just all preference and situational and all that. But, um, so I've since been, you know, gone back and I've actually, you know, I already deleted all the videos that, um, where I was going into this symbol memory and, you know, some other, the other objects, um, going over how to code your own like that, explaining what they did, and so on and so forth. Um, but because of the problems I had with it, um, and then also just, you know, I felt like some things were unclear and all that, and I really want to get those right, because I feel like having that base set up is really going to set us up for, you know, being able to learn this in a better way, um, and more easily, if, if I mess up what I'm saying and that kind of thing and don't catch it early enough I could really confuse people and that's not what I'm looking to do um, I'm generally kind of good about pointing out when I'm just not sure about something but um, there were just some things that I just you know I worded wrong and, and you know little things like that that I felt like just left it confusing so I wanted to go back and redo those um, but at the same time I wanted to kind of give an update and let you know what's going on um, but I also decided while doing this little update here um, some may have a question. Why do I need to go modular? You know, what's the point of having all this extra code? Um, and we can give you a quick example here. See, uh, when you register a symbol in Lua, um, it turns out that there is no way to register a local symbol in Lua. No, not currently. I talked to Darkbright about it, um, because I thought it was maybe a bug. And, um, he, he may end up adding a register symbol local function. Um, but of course the idea there is we could make our own function for that. Um, or in other instances, if we've got our objects, we can actually set it up so if we're, you know, if we create a symbol object and we set target self to true, we can register symbol in a different way. And because you can register symbols locally, using the auto assemble function um, that was a workaround for that and that works fine you know and the the interesting thing with this because we have this in a module now I can write this one time and I don't have to do this every time I want to unregister a symbol or I don't have to do this every time I want to register a symbol locally um, granted it's pretty rare I've literally only got inside my teleporter for um, the save name string and that kind of thing um, so, I mean, it's it's not something to be super concerned with, but the idea is still there. Um, you can, you know, add that extra functionality and maybe even have workarounds that take more lines of code, but then you can get it down to where, 
you know, now I can register a symbol with a single line. And it can be local or not, and, you know, and I can do all this stuff. Um, so that's kind of the point of going modular. It's just, you know, keeping that dry principle of uh, do not repeat yourself or don't repeat yourself, I guess, technically the way it's worded. <laughs> um, and then, you know, you can get more and more complex behavior depending upon where you want to go, especially when we start talking object-oriented programming. Um, and that was kind of the next thing I wanted to go over. I just wanted to, you know, so why go with objects at all? You know, what's, what's the point? Why do you want to do all this extra coding? If, you know, I can just register a symbol and, you know, read some memory and, and do these kind of things. And it's, you know, there's more things we can do than that. Um, and they also, to me, when you start talking object-oriented programming, it's a lot more clear when I read it. Um, if you've ever read, you know, gone across a cheat engine forum or even the fearless cheat engine forum, um, you might come across code where people are still using, I mean, they're, they're functions that are not even documented anymore technically within the uh, Cheat Engine Lua file. It's stuff they've either dug up or it was the way they did it years ago and they've just never changed. Um, so you might see a function that, you know, um, address list underscore, you know, uh, actually, I don't even think that's the right one, but um, uh, another one an example would be um, memory record underscore um, get value and, you know, these kind of things. And then they have to actually pass a memory record object to it. Um, and it just, it, you know, I mean, there's nothing really wrong with it per se. And technically, um, even though it's not documented just because of the way the Lua is set up in Cheat Engine, um, those kind of functions still work. And really, if you go look at the cheat engine and the source code, that's where you will see those functions that, you know, kind of in that exact manner. Um, so, and that may have been where they get that from, as they're actually reading the source code. Um, but if you read the documentation, you kind of see that it's, it's gone in a more object-oriented um, direction, which, you know, to me is a lot better. And I would always stick with that object-oriented programming, um, uh, syntax and that kind of thing. Um, so when we really start talking why should we go further in this object-oriented program? I mean, Cheat Engine gives us plenty of objects, and then again, we can just, you know, register a symbol and, you know, keep track of addresses and this kind of thing, and that's not really that complicated. And it's totally doable. And, you know, if you just don't want to mess with the objects, that's fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. You can just write yourself some functions when you need to here and there. You know, you could write your own register symbol local function and be done with it. Um, but, to me, when I really get into object-oriented programming, the idea is to simplify the code later. While this code is more complex, you know, I can write this code, I can write some unit tests, and I can test the shit out of it. And know that this will work kind of any way I can come up with using it, or really more any way I can come up with using it in my unit tests, uh, as long as I've written those correctly. Um, I, I think I started on one of these and then didn't finish it and didn't realize that maybe you know went to bed that night or something and didn't take good notes and then came back you know a week later or whatever and and just didn't finish testing some things and it kind of had some things acting goofy later um and that does happen um but now i've gone back and since fixed them and you know and i only had to fix it in that one code and say i've got 20 tables using the code the way i thought it was going to work um, and for some reason it just didn't throw an error and that kind of thing. Um, you know, I've only got to fix it in that module and at most update the modules and, you know, to repack the files, basically. Um, so, you know, that's part of it. But then it's also, like I said, we can simplify the code. You know, um, I've got some memory records here that I've just, you know, just a real basic script to just, you know, give me some values to read and write to and that kind of thing. Um, just to help with this demonstration but first we're going to start with uh, a really basic object here um, not the actual object class because um, that one's way basic <laughs> there's literally nothing you can do with it other than i create a new object but um so we've got this symbol class here um, and then this is even where you get into those meta methods because they can give you some more you know interesting behavior and you can actually do some really neat things um, with the meta methods um, when you get to a point to where you really feel like you've got a great, you know, or a good grasp on Lua, even I'm not even sure I've got a good grasp on Lua, but 
at any rate, when you get to a point when you feel like you might be ready to tackle that kind of thing by yourself, I definitely encourage you to look up those meta methods. Um, they get really interesting the kind of things you can do with it. Um, especially when you start talking like index and new index. Um, you know, and then of course you can add and you know, you can set it up to where you can have an object and you can just do this object plus this object and you know actually get a you know a number or really anything you tell it to spit out I of course add I would suspect a number otherwise to me that would be weird behavior but but at any rate um, you can do a lot of interesting things so say we want to create a you know a pretty basic symbol um, so we would just you know start with making our symbol actually we would start with requiring our module first And then because I have those init files, you know, I can just require my, the main part of my module and it will require everything for me when I feel like being lazy or I know I'm going to end up using everything in some way, be it other things needed or I need it directly. So if we create our symbol here, we, what we can start doing is we can start getting more and more complex behavior. So say we've got a hook that hooks a value and say, you know, like this was, you know, our player pointer. Um, we, we've, we've got a, you know, the hook that hooks the player base address and it's the base of our player structure. And so now we want a symbol for that. So we can go ahead and create that symbol. But now let's say we want to create a second symbol, but that one is going to be our coordinates. Actually, let, let's actually name it. To, otherwise, what's the point of doing this and explaining it? I don't know why you put soon. Um, anyway, so let's say we've got our coordinates. And we just want to point to, you know, the, the beginning of the coordinate structure. We don't want to go, you know, X, Y, Z, even though we totally could. Um, there's no reason we couldn't. But that exists within the player structure. So instead of, you know, having a pointer, you know, instead of doing something like this, say it's, you know, at offset 100, um, hex 100 from our player structure base. Um, instead of doing that and happen to know that this is our player structure pointer, and I mean, and of course, if you're naming this, you know, uh, pointer player, I mean, it, it's not super complicated yet. But the further you get down in that structure, the more complicated it gets. Um, whereas with this symbol, because I've got that concatenate uh, meta method set, now I can just actually use that player or that player symbol directly. And then you know, if we actually want to create our X Y Z chords, you know, we could go X chord. And then, you know, in that case, we could actually just use that, you know, say that is our the base of our, our core. We don't really need to get too complicated. Now here, um, because we're not actually concatenating, of course, we could just concatenate an empty string to kind of get by that. We would actually need to still use the name. Um, and this is the underlying behavior of this symbol. I know some of that. And you could just call to string. That would do the same thing. It would just return name um, to make sure you get a string. Otherwise, this will see it as an object. Um, but then if we're actually going to go, you know, say Y chord here, now we could even just simply add a concatenate a plus four on there and then you know on down the line and even in this case we could just add a zero to help us you know keep it clear in our head if that's you know the base of that same structure and cheat engine will accept that I mean if we did that you know it, it won't really care um, when we call get address use it in a memory record any of that um, and you know the you know we can keep going down that line i mean if we've got an inventory yeah. and then you know um say it's you know a little bit more of a complicated 
address there and that's where this can get a little bit more interesting because again we can still do use that player base you know or you could have you know i mean again you can keep stepping that down as far as you want to go um in the end really so you know i don't know say it's you know three pointers deep right i guess it'd actually be four in this case um you know, plus a zero zero um not really a offset i would actually expect but <laughs> i don't know some of the older games kind of did that kind of thing but um one c um so you know and then there you know that's our inventory symbol when we want to get the address for some code i mean all we really got to do is just actually call our inventory you know use our inventory symbol here and then we can just call get address and that's it you know it's basically done at that point where we'll be able to get our address um, as long as you know the name we've set for our symbol here um, is in fact something that works with get address um, and then of course because I've got the register symbol and unregister symbol you can use it in that kind of you know in that way um, but you don't have to again you can just plan on it being that the name is already something that's you know falls back on an address that can be you can get to <coughs> and then just use it that way um, and so let's say we want to just have a look at our our inventory here or our inventory pointer and you can kind of see I mean it's it's actually using that that structure there um, and you know and player will work in much I mean you'll you'll get this string with you know that will replace player and you know on down the line and, and then even if say there's an update and okay now that structure is kind of set differently and so we actually need to be at, you know, plus six zero. Um, it's as simple as a change like that. Now everything that relies on that underneath gets further down the line. Um, and then, you know, to actually be able to show a value here, let's say we've got our symbol. You know, let's, let's say it's health. trying to think ahead of what's going on here and it's totally messing me up when I type. I am not bright enough to think and type at the same time. Not not in that way. Um, not that far ahead. Anyway, um, so say we've got our health here now and then say it's even, you know, part of this more complicated structure to where you know, offsets can change pretty easily and that kind of thing. And again, that's where, you know, even when that changes you can make minor changes in your code and it can just trickle on down very very quickly if you've ever had a time where you've got a long list of memory records with all these addresses and they rely on something you know as a base address and that something with that base address changes i'm you know i'm thinking you've dealt with that you've gone through it and had to manually change things or even if you're doing like more like i do and copy it copy the xml out and then throw it in another text editor so you can start digging through it and batch editing and stuff. Um, but it's still kind of its own little pain in the ass, let's be honest. Um, I mean, you know, Cheat Engine is great, so I'm not going to knock it, but um, not like that. But you know what I mean? Um, and there are actually other plugins I've seen for batch editing um, addresses directly in Cheat Engine and that kind of thing. Cheat Engine does have that, you know, if we copy and paste you know we've got ways we can change things and modify things and all of that but at the same time um when i can just go in and change a basic oh not the right script um when i can just go in and change a basic you know some of my code here and just change an offset if i need to um that can make a life a lot easier and then like in this case um, and this may be new to some of you guys, um, some of you people. Um, in Cheat Engine, we can actually use ooh, we can actually use global values. 
Um, so we would have to set this to global. Anything we want to use in the table, it have to be global, and thus it needs to be unique and all that kind of great stuff. Um, and we could even go ahead and be a little more explicit here and make sure we know it's a symbol or a symbol object. So we execute that. Now it exists in the Lua environment. Um, so it's a D word. So if we want to, well, or what we can do is we can use that dollar sign and then we can actually use Lua variables directly within um, a memory record. And thus we can just use get address here. And when we add that, you can see that, you know, we've got our, our value from, um, and in this case, it's just a cheat entry tutorial step two value. Um, but, we, you know, we, we've got our value here, 91. And it's, you know, I mean, about the only difference is you'd still have to manually set the types and that kind of thing. But that generally doesn't change a lot. But again, if, you know, if that ever changes, and even if it is deep in that structure where it's, you know, and, you know something similar to this um, even when there's changes it doesn't take a lot to do that I mean we can change it you know up here in the structure and then that can have you know be reflected down here and on down the line um, and that to me that's kind of why object-oriented programming not only is it to me is this you know easily right re readable and I know exactly what's going on pretty quickly um, you know, it can make making changes a lot easier. And when you start talking updates of gains, even updates at Cheat Engine and things, you know, behave differently. You know, maybe if it's even something that you just misunderstood the behavior of a function and, you know, we're using it in the wrong way and for some reason it worked. And believe me, I've actually had that happen plenty of times for me. Um, but then all of a sudden an update... You know, maybe it's just as simple as, the, you know, the way the compiler compiles Cheat Engine, and it's just ever so slightly differently, and, and now what you were doing doesn't work anymore. Or there's a major update, and it actually changes that behavior, and all of a sudden it breaks things. Um, if you keep repeating yourself and all your code all over your table, it's going to break your table, and you're going to have, you know, 10, 20 spots to change things, whereas if we've done it modularly, and then even, you know, in an object... We can just change that object. We don't have to, you know, to change that behavior. We don't have to go through and change where we're getting this address and where we're getting another one and where we're registering, you know, a symbol and doing all these things. I mean, if you were, if I was using a bunch of, you know, get local address um, or a bunch of local addresses and I was trying to register those symbols. Um, I wouldn't want to have to have all this, you know, plugged all over my code to be able to do that in Lua. And then, you know, when if Darkbyte does add that get local or um, register symbol local uh, function, instead of having to change that in all these spots, I can just change it here. You know, even though this is just a work, you know, in my mind, more of a temporary workaround until we get something better. But... And then if it never gets added, it's again, it keeps me from having to repeat that over and over and over again. And then in some cases, it's, and even I'll admit, um, I don't remember all this shit sometimes, <laughs> you know, it's a lot of things to remember. I remember a fair amount, but it's, you know, that that's where I can go in and I can write a function one time and then use it all the time for, for years and not even remember how it actually works under the hood. I mean, once I start looking at it because I wrote it, I'll understand it. Um, or at least most of the time for me, especially if you, you know, good documentation, good comments, and that kind of thing. Um, that can be really helpful, but then it's nice to know that you don't, you know, you can still use that function and end up under, you know, it's just, it works. Um, especially if you're using unit testing and, you know, you've tested it real well and, um, and that kind of thing, you know, I mean, I know, like, for example, my um, get op code address function, I have actually, you know, I, I've honestly forgotten um, at one point that I have to use um, in a 64-bit program how to do it correctly, and it's fine, because I just call that one function, and I don't have to keep remembering exactly how it works, um, if I can find the dang thing.
you know, I can just know that this function works and I've already set it up and tested it in 32-bit and 64-bit. Um, and actually, it wasn't that one. I forgot. It was this one. Um, get call address because I forgot that whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit, you have to do this. Um, you have to do it a lot like I would do a, a get opcode address in a 64-bit. Um, and, you know, and that's the kind of thing. I mean, even though I, you know, I use this, you know, I can kind of forget about this and it's not that big a deal I don't have to go through and then even there um, when I wanted to refresh my brain on that all I had to do was come here and find the function and it's like oh yeah that's right I do have to get the address and an offset and you know add it you know plus the uh, instruction link or the address is linked in the instruction but anyway um, you know I don't, I don't have to remember all that all the time um, every time I go to use you know use that kind of behavior or have this code plugged all over the place I can just call this function and I'm done um, and you know and that's kind of the whole point um, I'm trying not to make this video too long but um, like I said I kind of wanted to show you know some of the ways that we can get more complicated behavior um, and then in this case say now I've changed my mind and I actually want to be able to directly read and write from this um, and I can easily do that because uh, you know not only does the do I have the symbol object, but I have memory objects. And those um, memory objects inherit from the symbol object. So that way their behavior stays the same. And then, you know, I don't really have to change a whole lot from that. But then I can get the, the added behavior of the memory object now. So here I can even go in and, you know, execute this real quick and then we can change this to our, you know, and if we had left it held it wouldn't matter, but um, because I did explicitly say what kind of object it was, but now we can still get that address and, you know, in exactly the same way, but then at the same time now I can, you know, read that address or, to, or write to that address and that kind of thing. And this one, um, because of the way, we'll go over that a little bit more, but uh, it would have thrown an error for me and let me know pretty quick. But anyway, because of the way it, it works under the hood and the way I've set it up, um, you know, default for a memory object, the data or the um, value type is a D word. Otherwise, I would have to actually set that if it was like a float or something. But other than that, you know, now I can get that value pretty easily. And then I could even write that value um, without a lot of extra work. And then, you know, it just can go, you know, more and more in a direction you want it to go without having to, you know, have a bunch of, you know, extra lines of code there in your table. And that's kind of the idea. I mean, while yes, it is a bunch of lines of code here that we've got to write up and, you know, we I got to know how this all works and be able to write this, but then I can get more and more complicated. And you can kind of even see here, I mean, it's, you know, I have a check cell parameter in the memory object. So that way, or a target cell, sorry, um, a target cell parameter and then I can sit and I don't have to, you know, you, you know, know whether I need to use the local or the, you know, the um, regular read small integer, or really read integer if this is a D word. But at any rate, you know, it can give that simplified object behavior without having to have all this extra stuff just like get address. I wouldn't have to always tell it target cell. Um, you know, I wouldn't have to have true here every time and remember to do that. It's I can literally just set that parameter or that property or um, really variable to what I need it to be and it will have that more complex behavior. I mean, um, you know, just like this sign, I can make it to where I don't have to pass that every time. Um, currently, I have it set up where I... Oh, no, right there, I do have a sign. Okay, I didn't think I did. 
Um, I, you know, again, that's where, I, you know, I, even if you kind of forget things, you can just start looking at the code and remember, okay, I did add that and, you know, have that behavior pretty easily. Um, and it just goes on down the, you know, down the line, the more and more complex you want to get. Um, and then I can even use my objects in other modules where like this one is set up to where it's, you know, kind of works with vectors and stuff like that. Um, and really they don't have to be next to each other because of the way the memory objects work underlying. You know, I can, I don't have to have them offset 0, 4, 8, you know, whatever. It can be offset whatever and then I can still have a list of, you know, inventory, or, you know, items or, you know, vectors or whatever the case may be. And, um... Like this one actually does allow for reading a bunch of values all at once. Um, yeah, this one's going to take a second to code up. So I'm going to write up a little, ex you know, um, example of the group memory object and then we'll come. And so then I can sit and, you know, get more and more complex behavior. And then, you know, so in this case, I can have my items here. Um, and that can be a grouped memory thing, and then, you know, I can just sit here and create my memory items in this list. And, of course, the way this group memory works is it just needs to be something that is, e you know, either a memory object or inherits from memory objects. So this could even be allocated memory for, say, the first one, and then I nest the rest of these inside that. Um, you know, it, it just kind of all depends upon how you want to go with it or what you need to do. And then when we're ready... We can go ahead, you know, get all of our values here real quick um, and do it, you know, in a, a bunch of different ways. Um, you know, it just depends upon how we've set it up. Um, and that's kind of the idea behind it is, you know, so if we were actually getting, you know, coordinates, it wouldn't be a, you know, read X chord, read Y chord, and on down the line, it would just be a read all real quick and we could get a table or we could just get those you know separate returns and you know and all that kind of thing um, and that's you know the whole concept behind the object oriented programming and then even just you know module being modular and drive principle and all that um, I don't have to repeat a bunch of code that I normally would you know it's only the direct behavior I need um, and maybe you know you're not doing anything that complex um, and so you just don't see a point to this, and that's fine. Um, you know, maybe you're just wanting to learn it to kind of see what could happen, but, you know, it, you know, in the end, it's just how far you want to go with things and what your plans are, you know. Um, but for me, it's, you know, I, I use a ridiculous amount of Lua in my tables. Um, and to some extent, even I would actually argue there's really not a need for it, some of it, um, but it just... I can automate tasks, you know, um, like my teleporter. I don't have to sit there and create every memory record when I want to teleport. I don't have to copy and paste the um, coordinates into it and have it hard-coded in there. And You know, I don't have to do any of these things. Um, I can literally, you know, most of it's automated with just clicks of buttons. I actually have it because of a plug-in that I can just, you know, I just literally come in here... And then, you know, I, yeah, I was going to say, I was thinking it was Control-Alt-S. Oh, of course, it's going to freeze up. Well, it took it so long. Okay, um, I'll have to dig into that. But at any rate, you know, it's still got, you know, I've got my table file packer loader here. You know, I've got all the stuff I like to add to the table um, by default. And it's all there. It's already set up for me, so I don't have to remember to do all this. Um, or cut and paste and do all that. I mean, it's just, you know, that's kind of the idea. And then down here, you can see it actually adds all this. So that way, you know, I don't have to redo things over and over again or open an old table or, you know. I mean, it, and there are, you know, many ways to do this. I know I used to have an actual table that was set up this kind of way. And then it was just a um, template, you know, and I actually named it that. And that way I would just copy it and paste it into a folder for the game and then rename it and, you know, start going that route. And, um, and there's nothing wrong with doing it that way. But, again, I can do things that you can't do with that, you know, automated. 
That way it already, you know, it's going to automatically get the process name for the auto attach and it's going to, you know, and in this case, I've, you know, I can check the version of the game um, using this MD5 hash and just, you know, get more and more complex behavior and not have to do things over and over and over again to make it do that. Um, and so, you know, like I said, it just, it depends upon how far you're willing to go with it and what your plans are. Um, and to me, that was a lot of my little modules. That's what it's about. It's about making it so I can make tables very quickly. You know, I don't have to spend a lot of time doing the tedious things that I don't like doing. I mean, if you enjoy doing that, then by all means, do it that way. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, don't let anybody tell you different. Um, as long as you're enjoying it. But I don't. I do not enjoy doing those kind of tedious tasks where I'm creating memory records that's you know even when i create a script i mean it is absolutely set up in such a way so i don't have to sit there and and add memory records and you know do all that kind of thing um i could even set it up to where it would automatically um add the script to the table um because i use an external deal i do it a little differently Yeah, something's causing it to go pretty slow today. Oh, control alt six. You know, so I can get more and more complex behavior very, very quickly. Um, I can do a lot of things with it, you know. Um, and we will go over, you know, like I said, I, I, I don't remember if that was in the video I didn't use yet or have deleted and decided to reshoot, but at any rate, um, like I said, we will go over at some point actually making your own plugins. I just kind of wanted to dig in this object-oriented programming. Just because I felt like that would help us down the line. Because it would, you know, it would illustrate like the meta methods and some of the more complex behavior we can get out of Lua. So when you, if you see me doing things like that, um, it won't confuse the shit out of you. Because if you've never seen it, you're going to be like, what the hell is that? <laughs> you know? How did you get it to do it where you can concatenate or whatever the case may be. But, um, but then that way, you know, we can code up these kind of things and, you know, do them in more interesting ways and keep it simplified so it's easier to read as long as you do know how it works in Lua. I mean, that is one of the tricks. Otherwise, you know, I mean, you might see it and kind of get the gist of it that, okay, this is the player and blah, blah, blah. But if you didn't know how that was working, you would kind of wonder how we got from this to this, you know. Um, so that is where learning these base things can kind of, you know, help us down the line. But, um, but again, it's just, you know, it's all about automation for me, a lot of it. Um, that way I don't have to just keep repeating things and then you know I've already got my my stuff here if I would have saved that like I normally do and even that I've got it to where you know the name is cut you know already put in the clipboard so all I gotta do is hit control s and then slap it in a folder and, and then I can run this and it'll run that external file for me um, and I like doing it this way just because this way if um, say I've got one cheat that actually needs three different scripts I don't have to merge them if you ever merge scripts together you kind of know that that's a little bit of a pain in the ass um, and I hated it I was like man why do I want to do it this way because it was like I'd have to go through and change things and it's either that or again I mean there's always different ways to do it you could nest scripts under this and then just set it because I don't have it as a group um, and just set it to where, you know, it activates everything under that and deactivates everything under that. So that way it kind of automatically does it. But, uh, you know, I like the way this works because I can, you know, if I had those files, I could check this and it would enable, you know, those four scripts automatically. And I wouldn't have to, you know, even the person using the table wouldn't have to know that. Um, and, you know, to me, good debug section kind of helps me keep all that straight. But that's, you know, that's the idea. Um, if I need my teleporter, I could just click that, and then now I've got all the stuff for my, t no, yeah, that's got to be set up. Um, I can have all the stuff here for my teleporter, and, and, you know, and start using that, and do what I need to do. Um, and again, you know, that's where it's, like I said, I mean, with a click of a button, it's not set up, so I can't show you that, but, um, because it does take some, some configuration, you know, because i got to tell where the cords are and all that kind of thing, but at any rate, you know, I can click a button, you know, type in a name here.
click a button and then I've got, you know, a teleport to wherever script that gets generated. Um, you know, and it's, it's just, you know, that automation to me is, you know, that's the biggest thing. That's why I go with Blua, you know, over just auto assembler and just, you know, and it, you know, and if you prefer C sharp, um, and you were just kind of checking this out and you think you can do this easier in C sharp, I mean, by all means, make trainers. Um, people, there are people that love trainers. Um, I'm not one of them. I'll, I'll definitely say that. I, I actually really don't like trainers. Um, I don't like making them. I don't like using them. <laughs> you know, I like cheat tables. Um, but if you like trainers, um, there are people that love trainers, and that's what they want to see. You know, if you like making the UIs, then fuck yeah, man, do it to it. Um, but hell, even there, I would say, you know, think of a way to automate some of that. Make it to where you can just give it a data object, and it generates a fucking form for you, so you don't have to sit there and make a form every time. Um, and there are, you know, I want to say there's already a plug-in to do that in, for, in Cheat Engine. Uh, Cheat Engine Auto... Um, trainer maker not just what cheat engine gives because i can't say i've ever used this but i do want to say i've kind of heard it, it you know i mean it works but it's not the greatest in the world and i don't know what how the plugin works but again i just don't make trainers but you know again that's that's the principle there it's just we want to automate things and make it to where i don't have to repeat shit and make it to where if there's you know a change in code i can quickly you know fix that and deal with it and get all this more complex stuff to keep working under the hood, you know, without needing much. I mean, you know, this was in the table Lua script, and there was an update, and I hadn't had time to fix it entirely, or, you know, release a new updated table. I could even just start telling users, you know, go into the table Lua script and change this one line to this, and it'll work now, and, you know, and that makes it a lot easier. They don't have to go through and edit a bunch of shit, and neither do I. Um, and that's, you know, that's where, to me, that, that object-oriented programming and then even just using modules and all that kind of stuff comes in, you know, because, uh, you know, as I talked about with the inheritance, I mean, I don't have to have that get address function here to be able to use it, you know, I just have to have it here and then inherit from there. Um, and then, you know, if I need to make a change to this, I can. And it'll still, you know, it'll just drop down the lit, you know, everything that inherits will get that and it'll just keep working. Um, and that's the idea behind all this. Um, so anyway, I just kind of wanted to go over that. I was hoping maybe, you know, something like this to kind of show the objects I'm planning on, you know, walking you through on how to make and that kind of thing would even help motivate you. Um, if you just, you weren't really seeing where this was all going. Um, that was kind of the thing because uh, you know like I said I'm actually making these objects and that kind of thing I mean it's not I don't know to me it's not that complicated to make them um, but I will admit it is kind of complicated to explain all this shit and keep it straight and not confuse the shit out of people um, or even confuse myself at certain points um, the big thing too was I had to actually go back through it all and look it over because there was some stuff I like I said, I, I think I'd gotten into it, thought I'd finished some things, and then, you know, took a couple naps and forgot about it or something. I'm not even sure what happened, but... So I had to fix that, um, and I do want... I need to actually finish up the documentation on the objects here. Um, so that way it'll make more sense when you, you know... Because um, these are... Because of the complexity of these, I do plan on doing this one. I mean, I, I want you to type it up yourself. Um all of it really um, I'd even say you know maybe watch the video pick up everything you can and then then just go into a blind and try and type it up yourself and then know that I'm gonna have code snippets with this stuff in there so when you're all done and you know it maybe something doesn't work you can look how I did it and see what you might do differently um, and maybe come up with your own way of doing it maybe you come up with something that I you know is simplified and actually works better than my own um, you know there's there's no telling you know, hopefully you guys are teaching me shit here in a year, or, you know, however long after you've played with this kind of shit for a little while and get the, you know, the basic understanding of it and, you know, go on your own exploration there and figure it all, you know, figure out other shit. Um, but we'll get more into that. Um, and then once we get past the objects, like I said, I, I do want to get into making some plugins. I really think like a templating thing, um, I don't think off the bat I'll will be doing anything quite as complex of my template engine because 
Um, and that is a tool if you think you're ready to, to, to tackle it. Um, you absolutely could. There's a, it's posted in the tools section of the Fearless Cheat Engine forum. And it's got a little bit of documentation explaining how, you know, how, to, how it works and how to use it. Um, I may actually finally shoot a video that explains it in more detail. But, um, but again, you know, I mean, we can do, you know, a lot of complex things with this. And, um, and this one, I mean, it, it lets you run Lua code in the template when you're generating it. Um, that's kind of the idea. If you've ever done any templating for HTML or whatever, um, that's how this works. It's, you know, it's meant to help you automate things. Not only does it just do simple, you know, replacements of things, um, cause these are actually Lua variables that will, that I can mess with outside of this. Um, you can see an example here. I mean, this is, this is something, you know, the, the template got some, a lot of default things that it sets up for you. Um, currently the tool doesn't have memory record generation. Uh, at least I don't think that version does. <laughs> I may go, you know, update all that, but I, I think that'll, that one will need a video to help explain it all. Um, but again, you know, the way that temp, my tabletting engine works and, you know, that's getting into the, you know, it can be as complex as you want it to be. Um, all I've got to do is just set some variables in here. And this isn't even in the global environment. It exists by itself it is set up to be isolated um, you can't change the global environment in a settings file or in a template but because of the way it works when I set you know a global variable in here it's automatically accessible here um, and you know there's not much to it I don't have to load it up in a, in a thing and parse a string and do all that all that gets handled by my templating engine um, and that's, you know, that's, again, that's that idea of automation. I don't have to, you know, string dot format every time or use a, um, interpret function, um, because I, I have one similar to what Python has that I've written. Um, you know, I can just do this. Um, but at the same time, like I said, uh, when we start writing one ourselves, or I'm teaching you how to write one, we'll probably go with more just a simple string search and replace kind of thing so that way you can just read a file that's your template and then replace some things in there for you and you know actually set up to where it slaps in the yo code and, and all that kind of stuff um so that's kind of the road ahead i just kind of want to give an update on what's been going on and why i haven't posted a video in a little while even though it really hasn't been that long i don't think um but i did want to you know i felt like seeing some of this stuff in action would help motivate you to keep going you know if this interests you and you're thinking oh wow that's cool as shit and hopefully enough people do it if you don't then you know that's you man and that's fine <laughs> you know i know there's plenty of things that people get excited about and i'm just like yeah dude that just doesn't do it for me um and that's okay we're all different but um but at the end of the day if this does excite you and this does seem like it's something you're interested in hopefully this will motivate you to to keep pressing forward and keep trying this and, and keep learning with me um and never stop i'm always learning you know i don't i'm no expert at lua um, even as much complex shit as you've seen i've come up with i mean it's you know it, it can be it's i still have a lot to learn um and hopefully I can teach you and maybe one day you'll teach me but um anyway I'm gonna stop here because I feel like this is already a freaking hour um yeah hopefully this motivates you to keep going and you kind of get the grasp but you know the idea of where we're going with all this and what all this is going to lead to um and then we'll you know you'll have your own modules and do things the way you want to do it and you know you can change the behavior of cheat engine to do things exactly how you think it should be done um have your own templating set up and understand it real well so that way if you need to change how it behaves you can do that um, okay that's it so on to the next